Hello everyone, and welcome to- Whoa, sorry, that was too loud. One sec. Okay, there we go. Hello everyone, welcome to my... To... Let's try this again. Hello everyone, welcome to Nanalee is at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 33 or Dominic, whichever you prefer. We're doing request matches 2v2s, starting with a match between Crittit and Bumcrumbs against Gnoll King and Sortail. Crittit and Bumcrumbs apparently on the team One Blood. I feel like there's a reference to something, but it's escaping me right now. Anyway, let's start. So, it's not the start button. This is the start button. Okay. We have Krita going for Hovercraft Factory. Bumcrumbs going for the Klingabot Factory. Gnome King going for the Rover Plant and Sortail on Shields. So, Gecko Isle. This is a map that's all about the reclaim. Like, everything about this map revolves around reclaim. So, I'm curious how well the players are going to make use of it. I mean, Krita's approach, they're clearly going for a bit of a rush. Bum crumbs, no glaives right off the bat, relying entirely on the daggers to do scouting and any kind of harassment that might happen. Same time though, Swordtail and Noel King both going for a very aggressive opening. How have they built any work? They have not built any workers yet. Neither of them have. The Mason's the first worker being built for the red team, but that's fine. I mean, if they manage to get in from here, especially if they hit bum crumbs, there isn't much. There's a lotus. That's it. These bandits would have no problem dealing... Well, okay, they have no problem dealing with the Lotus on its own. There is the commander right there that would cause additional problems, but it looks like they're going to go for it anyway. Or, no, never mind. Go for the more vulnerable lower target. This hovercraft factory doesn't have anything nearby. Nothing's going to stop it. The halberd should be up just right as the factory dies and will not be able to save... Oh, will be able to save it. Scorchers, focus on the factory. No, you... Oh, this is where micromanagement would have been really effective. No, Noel King is not going to be able to take out the factory without... Actually, never mind. There we go. Without turning around and getting it. I expected Krita would be repairing that factory, but no. Turns out they were just assisting. Probably a mistake. Probably meant to repair the factory, not assist the construction. But at this point, Krita's basically out of factory. And that's why you don't build factories in the lower part of this map. Although, to be fair, for Hovercraft, it kind of makes sense to do so. But it also makes sense to then build static defense near that or keep the commander nearby. Otherwise, that happens. And that's not good. That's how you get everything killed. Generally not a good thing. So, now that that's been rather unfortunately happened, bit of a revenge assault potentially coming in here for bum crumbs, trying to find, and they are successfully finding some room to get harassment in. But ultimately, not much. Critted the same thing. They're trying to find something with the daggers they can use to justify any kind of assault. But honestly, the main thing going in favor of one blood right now is they do have a better static economy. We don't see Sortail building up all the metal extractors in their base, nor do we see any reclaim at all. We do see a lot of really nice micromanagement with these bandits just getting around and taking out everything they can, but one blood's still ahead economically. For no other reason than that nothing's being taken here. Although, no, reclaim not being taken. The Mason trying to go around the back, trying to get the metal extractors over to the northeast, but it won't have much of a chance. That dagger is doing his job. So really, despite the early despite the early damage being dealt to One Blood's side, they're actually going to be able to take out a commander. They're going to be able to destroy quite a lot of the economy, staying ahead economically very effectively as well. And there it is, Bum Crumbs. Thank you for reclaiming rocks on this map. That's exactly what needs to be done. That's exactly what's being done, and that's putting One Blood way ahead. The only thing they don't have right now is enough production capacity to handle that. They only have twenty metal or twenty-two metal per second right here. I would really like to see Krita build another factory. I don't care if it's Hovercraft or Gunship or what. I think either of those would be a... Okay, Hovercraft is a questionable idea. Gunship wouldn't be a terrible idea. Get some reverb drops in there. Okay, that's cheesy. But seriously, you could... It... Oh, wait. No, actually, they are going for Gunship. Okay, I was joking. But sure, if you want to go for Gunship, that's not a terrible idea. You might as well just have that as, you know, your air strategy. You have the ground coming in here for bomb crumbs. They're doing a fine job with these glaives, so... Have Bum Crumbs going to the ground, focus a bunch of ground forces or anti-ground forces from their opponents, and then ultimately get in there with with the with the air units. Come with the harpies, come in with the the locusts, maybe. Not sure what Crit is gonna be going for. They haven't actually queued anything up thus far. But yeah, the Reaver Drop is a bit of a joke. I don't think Reaver Drop would be of much use here. There's no problem for these glaives to get around here and deal a bunch of damage. There's there's nothing to drop behind. It's I mean, it's not a bad idea, it's just there are better things you can do with gunships and cloakies. Especially at this stage in the game where it's, 
constant assaults coming in here. I mean, again, even more damage coming in from Bumcrumbs to take out basically everything of Null Kings. So right now, the only source of income on the red team side is Null King's commander. That's it. And a handful of workers. Like, convicts do generate some metal. That's it. There is no static economy. There soon will be a little bit, but yeah, it's this mason and those two... Seriously, this mason, these two convicts, the commander, I think there's one more thing. But that's about it. Oh yeah, and the factories. Like, that's how far on the back foot North Team is right now. And now one blood trying to come in here. The Outlaw's not going to allow this to happen. The Glaive's doing a fine job trying to push through it, but honestly, I would just have retreated. Like, seriously, that is a waste of Glaives. You cannot fight Outlaws with Glaives. Pretty much at all, ever. They completely nullify everything the Glaive does. And they work against any number of Glaives. It's the one Riot unit that honestly is pretty much uncounterable. Most other Riot units with numbers, you can run around and deal with them. Outlaws, at least for Glaives, it's not really an option. Like, for something like Daggers, it is an option. But they have larger range, which is why. But yeah, not for Glaives. Glaive range is too short. And, again, we're seeing it come in. And actually, we're seeing a fairly strong revenge force coming from the North team, despite the fact that they haven't had a whole lot of money. They've been doing a good job microing their forces and keeping them alive. I mean, everything they have has just been built up over the course of the entire game. In fact, get this up here. And if we look at the army value right now. Yeah, the army value for them has pretty much only gone up. Noel King and Sortail have not lost any forces, or have lost very little. So, honestly, they're just doing a fine job maintaining their armies without being able to build them up that much. On the other hand, One Blood is way ahead in terms of metal use. And it's only because their armies have been damaged and destroyed that they're not so far ahead in terms of army. Mostly because it's a bunch of glaives that aren't doing much, which is why I'm curious what's happening with the... Okay, Nimbuses. That's what's happening with the gunships. Get the Nimbuses up. There's enough production capacity to make that work. Unfortunately, a lot of the metal was excessed from earlier, so that's not going to be units, but hey, it's still something. Yeah, Nimbus and Locust uh, could work, but honestly, North Team is just going to be able to get in here simply for having kept their units alive. Like, honestly, good micro, but they might no longer be the case. The Scorch is being completely destroyed. And remember, North Team doesn't have as much of an economy to work with. They do still have an economy now. They've managed to rebuild. They're in a position where they can get their forces back on track, despite having lost a fair chunk of them. But they also wiped out almost the entirety of One Blood's forces. So, honestly, at this point, North Team could just take it. There's hardly anything left to defend. They have an entire army behind... Like, Swordtail's army could reinforce Null King's. Null King's army is... If this Lotus gets destroyed, theoretically enough to get rid of Bumcrumb's commander, or was before. I mean, it will be rebuilt pretty quickly, but still. There's the shield force behind the Swordtail. But now Bumcrumb's has all this reclaim to work with. And the Nimbus has come in, and there isn't much in the way of anti-air, and that needs to be adjusted for as well. There are Vandals on the way for Swordtail. I don't know if it's going to be too little too late, though. At this point, this game does not look like it's going to end anytime soon. North Team had a very small window they could have used if they managed to keep the Scorchers alive while getting rid of the Lotus, which they didn't. At this point, that window is closed, and North Team is just going to need to rebuild their economy. They have done so, but they're going to need to rebuild an army on top of that, get an army large enough to actually be able to deal with what One Blood's building, and One Blood still has the economic advantage. They have all this reclaim. Bumcrumbs has been constantly reclaiming all the rocks in the backside of their base, and I would like to see Krita do so as well, but... Regardless, this team is at least somewhat aware that those rocks are worth reclaiming and will do so. So yeah, One Blood has room for economic growth. Granted, North Team is also, also slightly ahead right now and should probably look to actually rebuild more. And yes, they are. Wasp going in rebuilding the southeast side of the map, so Krita will be able to get their economy back on track. Though again, I would like to see a bit more reclaim just to very rapidly build back up. But this is fine. This will work. One Blood's still in a good position. They still have this giant field to reclaim up front, and Bumcrumbs has taken full advantage of that. So at this point, it's fine. Noel King's commander, on the other hand, is the only commander left on the north side, and I think they have storage, but I don't know. I would hope they have storage for their sake, because their commander's under some threat. Probably won't die to this Nimbus, but, you know, you might think, hey, they might not know. They might figure there might be another force coming around the back or coming to flank that the Nimbus is pushing them into. There isn't, 
But if there were, that would be a really smart idea, and also would be some would be a reason to build storage because they're not sure if Null King's commander will survive. That being said, though, Null King's commander is more just a small threat, like a small poke for this Nimbus. The real, the real question is what's going to happen for One Blood now that they've pretty much gotten a fight against an even opponent. Their economic harassment, that that time has passed. Like there's nothing left for it. There's no longer going to be any real, any real concern for that or consideration for that. And at the same time, anti-air has been built up. So while One Blood does have their air force and the ground force, their opponents do have anti-air. At this point, it's going to come down to if they're if One Blood is able to build up enough of a ground force for the anti-air, or if North Team is going to have the right combination of anti-air and anti-ground to be able to deal with One Blood's entire army. That's what it's going to come down to, but it's also kind of coming down to map control. If we look already here, One Blood only has the south side of the map. They have a lot of reclaim to work with, but that reclaim has almost run out, whereas North Team this entire time has been basically pushing into One Blood's territory. This area, this plateau here, is by all rights One Blood's, but they aren't going for it. They never went for it, and now they're on the back foot as far as economy goes. They had the reclaim for now, and they still have a lot of rocks to work with, but that will only last so long. Although, admittedly, they are taking full advantage of it, which is nice to see. But, like I said, they're even right now. Army values are pretty well even as well. It's going to come down to micromanagement. And, to some extent, it's going to come down... No, it's entirely micromanagement. To some extent, it's going to come down to unit choice as well. But, mostly, it's going to come down to where everything's positioned when fights start. And how they reposition. That's it. It's just so close right now. And, actually, at this point, looks like... They have spotted... Okay, One Blood has spotted North Team trying to go for the Southwest. Does not look like it's a feint, but... Always a thing to check for, but no, it's not, actually. I have expected Noel King to go in south while this attack was happening, just to try to work from that. Like, especially if Sortel was thinking, okay, I'm going to move my bandits down here. And if you look at the radar is for... For Bum Crumbs, if they had moved their bandits down here and then swung it around. If they knew what exactly where the radar was, went, okay, the radar's there, range is about here, bandits here, bandits here, bandits here, use that as a feint while getting a bunch of forces over here from Null King, I could see that working. And it looks like that was what was being attempted for the way the bandits were moving. It just didn't work because they didn't get out of the radar range before, like, they didn't get out of the radar range in the direction of the southern base before going back. So it looks like an attempt at misdirection that didn't quite work out. At the same time, though, Bum Crumb's coming in with a very strong attempt at misdirection, pushing Nimbus in the back, getting rid of most of the static economy, and putting One Blood's economy way ahead once again. Though I should point out, North Team has been excessing metal quite a lot, mostly due to a lack of energy. On the other hand, One Blood is pretty healthy for energy. Most of it built around wind generators, which on this map is questionable, but there are enough of them, it actually doesn't matter. Even if they all went down to point two, I think there's enough that they'd still be fine. No, 45, yep, yeah, they'd be fine. Because they still have the geo plant being built up. They still have... Do they have any solar? Is it just wind? Is that really all they have? Actually, they wouldn't be fine. They'd be kind of screwed, honestly. But it's not a big deal right now. The geothermal plant being built up will provide them with a fairly large amount of reserve energy. Because if that drops down to point two, that's going to be in the like total of 10-ish range, 10 to 15 energy. So, yeah, the geo plant's definitely a smart choice. So right now, One Blood, they're way ahead in terms of production. They're way ahead in terms of economy. They're way ahead in terms of overall metal. Actually, they're way behind in terms of excess. They didn't excess anywhere near as much as I thought they did. They excessed a bit at the beginning of the game, but they've been really on point with their production ever since. So the only downside is the lack of territory. One Blood mostly building their economy around the overdrive, not so much around static economy, which is fine at this stage in the game, but North Team, they have their rocks. They could reclaim whenever they want, so it's kind of a matter of whether or not they decide to do so. Because that's 2,500 metal, or 3,000 metal in their territory. Yeah, they could easily get, you know, plus 30 for a couple minutes. Like, they could easily get to, if not past, One Blood's economy right now for about a minute and a half, and then use that to, I guess, build up a power infrastructure that allows them to actually use their economy, or even just from there, go for a massive assault. Their army value isn't that far behind. It's, it's not great. But it's not that far behind. So, you know, a, a two minutes of 
equal economy. If they had the production to support it and the power to support it, they'd be fine. But Eastall... Eastall is preventing that from being a reality, and that could very well lead to death. This assault here, Bombcrumb is going for it. Not really going to find too much purchase yet. But still scouting it out. They oh, never mind. I was about to say, they got a position, but no, they don't. The road or the snitch coming in there, destroying the retreating army. Very clever from Sortail. It's about to say that there's a possibility for Bumcrumps to be able to surround Sortail while Sortail's coming in. I mean, we will be surrounded somewhat, but still, to get rid of this force, but not with that Roach. Or at least not easily. Still, we have the Cyclops, and this is this match was played on the old version on 1.6, 1.7.3, so the Cyclops is still distressingly good. Hasn't been nerfed yet by the point of this game was played. But that might be the only thing keeping them in the game right now. Because again, North Team just needs to get their energy up, needs to get their economy up, and then, or production rather, and that's it. Unfortunately, they haven't really been focusing that much on energy. I mean, there's the worker building some power plants, but not really quickly enough. Which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, they just, that's the thing they've been missing. Is the energy to allow for production capacity to allow for them to outproduce one blood. Oh. No, it's not battle, right? What? Sorry, is my Twitch stream screwed up? I'll check it afterwards. It should say 0k in the Twitch stream. If it says battle, right, that's Twitch's problem. I changed it before starting stream. Anyway. This. Oh, yeah, okay, that's why. FFC is saying that it says battle right on the stream. No, nope, that's... Refresh Twitch. It'll be fine. Anyway, back to the game. And back to... Bump comes of trying to find yet another point to get in and actually probably going to be finding one. There's not a whole lot of defense in the back. This fire base at the front is the only thing that was really stopping it. I mean, there's a focus on Aegis's being built up by the North team to discourage one blood from attacking, but nothing was really in the center. Nothing is stopping any assaults in the main base. So Bump comes can just have a field day. Unfortunately for them, they don't have the forces in the right position. And by the time they do manage to get in, the fencers will have caught up. On the other hand, They've got enough glaives, they could just fend off the fencers. Actually, I don't know what the concern is there. But no, glaives instead going for the backline assault, trying to get rid of some of the power, trying to get rid of some of the metal too, which honestly isn't a huge deal. I mean, getting rid of the power, yes, get rid of that, but getting rid of the metal? It's, North Team's been accessing for the last five minutes, I don't see that being the major issue. At the same time, over to the south, an attempt to attack the south, the southern base, attack Bump Crimson's base, completely going south. Well, not going south, actually. It's going north as a result of having to retreat because that that defense is just way too strong. So, successful harassment on the part of Bum Crumbs, unsuccessful counterattack on the part of Sortail, and that is putting Sortail in the towel-throwing position. Get this towel most ready, because Sortail is about to throw it. Though, to be fair, I don't think North Team is that... Well, let's see. Is North Team that far behind? Yeah, okay, they are that far behind. Their army value is just nothing. Their economy's okay, but their energy hasn't been great. They're getting pounded on all sides, and now they're finally getting some caretakers for some of their factories, but... Well, I guess they had one here for the air factory, but otherwise not many. Still, this is... It's 30 metal per second going into the factory. Need two or three more caretakers to make this work, and that's kind of a shame. Like, really, between the Eastall and the lack of caretakers, North Team just lost a game they really had an advantage on going in. Or, okay, going very beginning they had a disadvantage, and then they managed to rush in, get rid of the... No, sorry, they got rid of the factory, put them at an advantage, then they lost some economy, they were kind of far behind, then they caught back up, then they were actually very even in terms of metal and energy and army value. They just didn't have enough energy to make it work or to get any real production capacity, and so they didn't have a lot of caretakers, which meant they didn't have enough production capacity in case they reclaimed, which also meant they had all this reclaim to try to catch up with that they couldn't use because they didn't have the energy for it. Like, their energy income flatlined around 40. Actually, flatlined around 35, got up to 40 near the end, but yeah, it's like 30 to 35, it was stuck there. Whereas if you look at one blood, yeah, the wind, you can see the wind generation fluctuations, but even then it never dropped below 65 once it got to the late game. One blood was in a very secure position, while the same cannot be said for basically anyone else like the north team had nothing they had a period where army value was even and at that point metal income was fairly even and metal usage was still behind but otherwise it was fairly even 
and then they just could not spend it because they did not have the energy income to make it work and didn't have the caretakers either. But if they had that, could very well have gone the other way. Still though, just solid economic play from Krita and Bumcrumbs. Well done to you. Anyway, next match is going to be between Patrician and Nubula on Otago. The request, not sure how this is going to be. It might be a little bit lower rank. It's a Neutron Star game. So I think that's like second or third highest rating. Something like that. Anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. Also, I've got to double check that that thing because, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Twitch can be weird sometimes. But, yeah, should it should say 0k. It says... Oh, it does say... What the heck, Twitch? Oh, for crying out loud. I put it... Ugh, I put it at 0k. I don't know why it stuck with battle right. That is not correct. Okay, it's it should be fixed now. I don't know. Twitch does, sometimes does not save what game you switch to. Like, you change to a game and then it just doesn't save it, or it's not quite spelt right, or has a space, or something. I don't know. It's it's really picky. Anyway. That's been sorted. So yeah, next map, Patrician versus Nubula on Otago. Stay tuned for that. 